Now we come to a very important concept and this is called Lebesgue measurability. So this will allow us to define what are called Lebesgue measurable sets. And if you recall from uh, one of the first videos in the first week, we have mentioned that due to the banach tarski paradox, we cannot expect finite additivity to hold for any two arbitrary disjoint sets. Uh, and therefore, we need to uh, categorize uh, to uh, categorize the sets of subsets of R D into two classes. One will be called measurable, and one will be called non-measurable. And the measurable sets will be expected to satisfy the finite additivity rule. Now recall from the last lecture that we have finite additivity, finite additivity holds for what are called separated sets, separated sets. So, remember that E and F are called separated, separated if the distance between these two sets which is defined as the infimum of all Euclidean distances such that x belongs to E and y belongs to F this is strictly greater than 0. Okay, so, this is a definition for separated sets and we have seen that finite additivity for the Lebesgue outer measure holds for separated sets. So, this is for the for the Lebesgue outer measure. So, now the goal is goal is to extend the class of sets in R D for which for which finite additivity continues to hold continues to hold which means that if you take two sets in this class which are disjoint then uh, so let's say let e and f be two sets two sets from this extended class extended class which we still have to define which are disjoint then the Lebesgue outer measure of E union F should be equal to the Lebesgue outer measure of E plus the Lebesgue outer measure of F and uh, we will see that for what we call Lebesgue measurable sets this will be true. So, the idea is to follow what is called the Littlewood's first principle Littlewood's first principle. So, there are in total three principles of Littlewood in analysis that uh, we will encounter. So, the first one says that uh, measurable sets. So, these are the sets in this class which will follow finite additivity are almost open almost open. So, I am putting this in quotes and I will make this precise here, but the idea is to approximate measurable sets uh, with open sets. So, this class of measurable sets are called almost open. So, this is Littlewood's first principle. So, now we can define following Littlewood's first principle what are the Lebesgue measurable sets in R D. So, a subset E of R D is called Lebesgue measurable if 
given epsilon greater than 0, there exists an open set because we wanted to approximate, we want to approximate a measurable set by open sets, which is why this is almost open. So, there exists an open set U which contains E such that the Lebesgue outer measure of the set complement of U minus E is less than or equal to epsilon. <coughs> so, here notice that I am not writing this is not equal to m star u minus m star e in general and not only that we would like to uh, avoid such expressions we want to avoid such expressions because even in the extended real numbers plus infinity minus plus infinity is not defined. So, this is for the extended real numbers. So, we want to avoid such things, but <coughs> for nice subsets we will see that uh, this inequality m star u minus e is equal to m star u minus m star e. This will hold, but um, we have to be careful in how we define this. So, <coughs> once we have the um, notion of what is a Lebesgue measurable set, then of course the natural question is, question to ask is which sets are, which subsets of R D are Lebesgue measurable. So, we will answer this question in this lecture today and we will see that this is a quite a large class of sets which is Lebesgue measurable. So, our next theorem lists uh, what are the primary examples, basic ex examples of Lebesgue measurable sets. So, the first one is that the empty set empty set is Lebesgue measurable. The second is that if E is a subset of R D and the outer measure is 0, then E is Lebesgue measurable. The third is if E is an open set, then E is Lebesgue measurable. Fourth is that if E is closed, is uh, this is open, this is closed, then E is Lebesgue measurable. The fifth uh, property, the fifth uh, class of sets which are Lebesgue measurable is given by finite uh, countable union of Lebesgue measurable sets. So, the fifth one is that if E is, a, is Lebesgue measurable, if E is Lebesgue measurable, then E complement is Lebesgue measurable. Sixth property is that if E n n equal to 1 to infinity is a countable collection collection of Lebesgue measurable sets Lebesgue measurable sets which means that E n is Lebesgue measurable 
for each n the big measurable for each n greater than or equal to 1 then the union i equal n equal to 1 to infinity e n is Lebesgue measurable. And lastly, the seventh property is that if E n n equal to 1 to infinity is a collection of Lebesgue measurable sets, Lebesgue measurable sets, then the intersection n equal to 1 to infinity E n is again Lebesgue measurable. So, we see that this already covers a large variety of uh, subsets of R d and in particular every open set, every open, every closed set is Lebesgue measurable. A complement of a Lebesgue measurable set is Lebesgue measurable and the Lebesgue measurable sets are closed under countable unions and countable intersections meaning that um, countable union of Lebesgue measurable sets is Lebesgue measurable and countable intersections of Lebesgue measurable sets are Lebesgue measurable. So, just a remark that the properties 5, 6 and 7 constitute let me remark that the property the first property the fifth property and the sixth property these three properties are together uh, together constitute the axioms for axioms for what are called sigma algebras. So, we will see abstract sigma algebras later, but, but uh, in terms of sigma algebras, the these three properties says that Lebesgue measurable sets form a sigma algebra. So, the empty set is included, complement of a set in the uh, algebra is included as well as countable unions of uh, measurable sets are included within the algebra. So, let us look at the proof. So, the first one is uh, pretty easy. So, we have already seen that uh, m star phi equals 0. This was one of the axioms for the outer measure. And so, we can take the empty set itself as the open set that covers the empty set. So, take uh, u equal to phi and then if you take e is also equal to phi, then m star of u minus e is again m star of the empty set, the set difference of m two empty sets is again an empty set and this is equal to 0. So, given any epsilon is get less than epsilon for any positive epsilon, which means that the empty set is Lebesgue measurable. Similarly, if m star e is equal to 0, then we can use use the outer regularity outer regularity of m star to find um, an open set to get so given any any epsilon greater than 0 <coughs> we get an open set u containing e such that 
m star of u is less than or equal to epsilon. So, by monotonicity m star u minus e is less than or equal to m star u and this is less than or equal to epsilon. This implies that e is Lebesgue measurable. Now, let us look at the third claim which is that every open set if E is open then E is Lebesgue measurable. So, this is trivially true because uh, you can take E u to be E so that u minus E is the empty set and therefore, m star of u minus e is 0 and this is less than any epsilon that you can take for any epsilon positive. So, therefore, if e is open then e is Lebesgue measurable. <coughs> Similarly, uh, rather than taking the fourth one rather than taking the claim for the closed subsets, let us look at the sixth one first and then we will do the fourth and fifth. So, for the sixth one, so let E n be a collection of measurable, measurable, the big measurable subsets. subsets of R d. Then given epsilon greater than 0 for each n greater than equal to 1 choose an open set open set u n containing E n such that m star of u n minus e n is less than or equal to epsilon over 2 to the power n. Again, there is a uh, 2 to the power n epsilon over 2 to the power n trick here. So, for each n greater than or equal to 1 using the fact that e n's are Lebesgue measurable. So, this is because since each e n is Lebesgue measurable. So, we can choose such an open set says that the set difference has measure outer measure at most epsilon by 2 to the power n. So, now take the union of all these open sets u n n equal to 1 to infinity. This is an open set. It is a union of open sets. So, it is an open set and if you take the outer measure of u minus the union n equal to 1 to infinity, then this is union n equal to 1 to infinity u n minus union n equal to let me write m equal to 1 to infinity E m. <coughs> so, this is again can be written as n equal to 1 to infinity u n intersection with the complement n m equal to 1 to infinity e m complement. So, let us see what this is. So, we have m star union n equal to 1 to infinity u n intersection with the complement of the unions of E m s complement. So, this is nothing but n equal to 1 to infinity u n intersection with the intersection of m from 1 to infinity E m complement. And so, this can be written as m star union n equal to 1 to infinity u n 
intersection intersection with the intersection of all these complements em complement now note that this intersection m equal to 1 to infinity em complement is a subset of en complement for any n greater than or equal to 1 so this implies that the measure of the union un intersection intersection m equal to 1 to infinity em complement this is bounded above by the outer measure of un intersection en complement and this is nothing but this is nothing but un minus en so this is less than or equal to the sum n equal to 1 to infinity m star of un minus en and each of them them is less than or equal to epsilon by epsilon by 2 to the power n from our choices and this is equal to epsilon so we have shown that we have found an open set u which is the union of all these uns such that u minus the union of all these ens has measure at most epsilon so the union is union n equal to 1 to infinity en is is Lebesgue measurable.